just finished talking about leadership and talking about the challenges that come with interrupt work. Yeah. And uh, I used to find signing contracts kind of disruptive. You know, I would be sitting at my desk back in the days when we would be in an office and someone would turn up with like this stack of things with the little um, 3M post-it tags. Yellow stickies? Yeah, little stickies, like sign here, sign here. We need your driver's license. What's your home address? Sign here, sign here, <laughs> sign here, sign here. And I was like in the middle of doing something super impactful for the company, right. like writing a talk like this or okay. you know, getting ready to go into a strategy meeting, reviewing something that one of my really brilliant teammates had built for me. Yeah. And instead I'm like in the middle of that. Now it comes to me in DocuSign and I can deal with it sort of on my own time. I mean, people will nag me if I don't right. get to it right on time. But how have, how have you as a leader thought about dealing with this, this nature of constant interrupt work, the, the way we've shifted to being distributed, not together, you can't swivel around in your chair and get the answer. And how has that informed how you think about DocuSign's product? Well, it's a really interesting question uh, when you think about this interruptive nature, because obviously with COVID, the elephant in the room, right, for this topic, uh, it's changed everything. Uh, on the one hand, uh, we're less interrupted when we're working from home uh, because less nice. people stopping by. Um, and it's interesting because everyone's got a different pace and energy. And one thing I realized for my, my own self during COVID is that I'm more effective in an office. You know, and uh, I'll be walking from here to the DocuSign uh, headquarters, uh, and I'm actually going to the office three or four days a week now. And I really do get a lot of energy from my colleagues, even though sometimes it's interruptive, as you said. Uh, but, the, but on the flip side, there's trade-offs, right? And I realized when I was working from home, I got that opportunity to concentrate to a little bit more. Work. Yeah, a little deeper thinking. Uh, I used to uh, always look at plane rides that some people don't always enjoy, but I actually said plane rides are a great opportunity. Rides. I've got several plane rides in front of me, and I feel like... <laughs> I a lot think. of stuff could be coming my team's way after. Yeah. When, do you have that same phenomenon when someone says, don't you think it would be great if they had phones on planes? And I was like, going, no, <laughs> don't do it. It's that one spot I can go. Uh, but, but I would tell you that to your point about technology, one of the goals is to figure out a way to let the technology do, we call a DocuSign we call the anywhere economy, but it's also the anytime economy. And so you can actually control those things and say, I'm going to stack them up and use them in an efficient way. It's true if you stack them up for more than a day. We might send you a reminder, or the person that sent you the DocuSign might send you a reminder that you do have something to sign and review. But, but our, our construct is to say, make it easy for you to do it anywhere. As long as you've got a phone, you can use your DocuSign, both sending things for people to sign as well as signing them yourself. And you can choose to do that at your pace. And I do think it's a big benefit in this interruptive world we have to be able to do them. One of the things we sometimes talk about is this, you can be walking somewhere and doing your DocuSign. So you take that commute moment uh, or walking to dinner, it doesn't have to be to work, and use it. So I think it is a big benefit, and I would tell you we tried to design the product for ease of use, particularly on a mobile phone, such that you can actually, with just small, small little bits of time, uh, get your work done. We call that unleashing. So PagerDuty a couple of years ago announced that you can run an entire major incident from a mobile device, yeah. where historically developers and tech ops people, leaders, had to carry laptops into movie theaters and yeah. have them in their bag for weddings in case something came up because their incident management planning and solution were all on this on these big computers. And so yeah. that unleashing, being able to sign documents from wherever you are, being able to deal with an unruly incident from wherever yeah. you are, I think has created so much freedom for our teams. And to your point, there's there's a conundrum in that because this freedom that we get from being able to work from home and um, be distributed and live by a lake or a mountain or you know whatever in the city, whatever flows your boat, uh, you're also challenged with the the loneliness that you can experience. But I think safe to say you and I are both extroverts. And strong. Yes. And we gain energy from other people. So there's also this sense of isolation. Uh, and so how have you thought about continuing to accelerate your own digital transformation in this kind of distributed working environment we now yeah. have? Because you have a lot of remote workers as well, correct? We do, yeah. And if you think about it, just give you some quick stats from DocuSign. We've got uh, 75, 78, I think, 100 employees right now. And we recently did a survey. First of all, find out what people want to do. And in the old days, the sense I had, it was about 20% of our population that wanted to basically be remote. And about 80% wanted to be in an office, maybe not five days a week, but you know, reasonable frequency. Um, and now we're in a situation where we have about 25% of our employees are actually Actually remote regardless of whether we ever you know go back to offices they're in remote locations and won't be attached to an office and of the other 75% 
just over half of them would like to not be in an office more than one or two days a week. And so we actually have a phenomenal people are saying, I do not want to be frequently in the office. And we're trying to figure it out because, as you said, in addition to some people like me needing that energy that you described, we also believe for a lot of our younger employees that are early in their careers, they benefit. They need they, that they social need interaction. That social interaction. Yeah. And, and also, there's an apprenticeship model to a lot of our roles that we have. So people talk a lot about the collaboration. I am actually believing we can get a lot of the collaboration done with the tools that we have, right? tools you build, tools I build, we actually, that's part of the digital transformation we drive. But I really believe there's a, a learning aspect that's very difficult to get. So we're trying to figure out that model right now. And I think from the standpoint of digital transformation and DocuSign, we want to create employee choice. I do think in the end of the day, it's going to be difficult to be very aggressively anti the momentum that you know employees are pushing. And the last thing I'd say about it, and this is something tricky for me, I'm probably the oldest person in this room, uh, but there is a generational thing. And people in my position say to themselves, hey, I had a successful business career by many you know, measures, and how did I get here? Well, I was in an office every day. It doesn't mean that's the only way to do it, it's just the way I did it. So it's the only experience I have pre-COVID was more or less being in an office every day. And so when people say, well, how does it work? It's not that it has to be the right way, it's just the only way I know. And so I have to be really careful to say, don't take my own experience and force that on other people that have creative ways to grow and creative ways to do their own development. So that's what we're trying to find with that balance of not being too prescriptive, but also making sure we don't lose the wisdom that we have from our own experience. Well, and I think the good news is we have a lot of data <laughs> and a lot of analysis that we can use yeah. sort of guide new experiments. That's how I think about it at PagerDuty is we're, <laughs> we're never really making a final decision on what the best way to work is. We're running lots of different experiments yeah. and keeping the door open to shift, to change, because you know one of the things that I've found is employees are not gonna come into an office if there's nothing amazing happening in that office. If it's yeah. just like four other colleagues sitting at desks and it's quiet and then sort of why did I spend the time on the commute that I used yep. to be able to use for my workout or to be with my children or yep. you know, to see my family or whatever the case may be. Um, or, or work even harder for DocuSign. Or There's work so even many options harder. what you can or do work with even that harder. Time. Hopefully work smarter because yes. you know, PagerDuty and DocuSign, we've sort of grown up together. Like yep. we've leveraged your product, products and platforms and your team's been using PagerDuty Vice almost versa. since yep. the very beginning. And I think we've learned a lot from each other. One of the things I know we have in common from a values perspective is we care deeply about trust. So tell me a little bit about how you as a leader think about building trust with your customers and how does that play into um, resiliency and availability and making sure that every experience your users have with DocuSign is a great experience. Well, it's funny, we've talked about this before about trust. And at DocuSign, we have three core values, trust, responsibility, and the well, third one's a little bit unusual for a corporation, but we call Docu Love because we've talked about so many people. I just refer to PagerDuty as a love story. It's a love so story, exactly I, right. I heard that, right there. And people say, hey, I signed this thing with DocuSign, it changed my life, I love DocuSign. So we kind of realized that was a value that was uh, seeped its way into our business. But trust is always the one we lead with. And the way we think about it is so many companies are building their business on top of DocuSign that if we're not providing reliable service and we're not resilient in the way you described, um, it has a huge impact on their business. One of my yeah. favorite examples is T-Mobile. And T-Mobile's gotten to the point now that in any way you want to get a T-Mobile phone, you have to go through DocuSign. If you go into the stores, they have tablets, and you sign up using DocuSign. If you call the call center, they're using DocuSign. If you go to their website, it runs through DocuSign. So um, we've built an incredibly redundant system. But what's interesting about thinking about trust, there's multiple ways to do it. When I joined DocuSign, we had 100% of our services were provided on our own data centers, colo data centers, but our own, nothing in, in the public cloud, so over five and a half years ago. But by then, pretty much everyone had been moving at least some significant portion into public cloud. And I was kind of scratching my head, this seems like an odd choice. But we had this amazing five nines uptime with you know, no maintenance windows, and our customers really appreciated it. Our big bank said, the reason we go with DocuSign and pay, quite frankly, a premium is because of the trust we have in your platform. Now we're realizing we can do it both ways. And so we're starting to work with public cloud as well and saying we can have choice. I do think as we move forward, it's gonna be important to not lose the criticality that trust is the customer success you know, sort of sin qui non, right? Without that, our customers are gonna say, we just can't support DocuSign. And at the same time, we have to be creative in using technologies. And actually, PagerDuty is another example of this. DocuSign has a little bit of a not invented here syndrome from time to time, as your, your team will tell you. And early on, we thought about PagerDuty in a very limited fashion, which was like, okay, it's an alerting system. And you know what? 
yeah, begrudgingly, our engineers would say, they built a pretty damn good alerting system. <laughs> begrudgingly. And so we, 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 if we had more time, we could build our own. I bet oh, it would yeah. be just as good. We're like, some ways we're like the Google people. We'll build our own everything, right? <laughs> and, and then over time, I was like, hey, this is a pretty cost-effective way to do it. And then you know, it really takes, it takes a lot of uh, things off of our plate. Um, but now over time, as we're kind of maturing a little bit, I think we're starting to say, we should actually think about pager duty in a broader platform. We should think about pager duty, to your point about trust, and saying, like, how can they just help us deliver a better end result to our customers? How can we have more customer success by leveraging your platform more broadly? And that, I think, is a real opportunity. When you think about trust, is you also have to be innovative and say, I'm going to continue to drive the new technologies and the, and the new transformation opportunities so I continue to stay at that high level uh, of availability for my customers. Yeah, because it doesn't matter how great your product is. If it doesn't work in the two seconds that somebody needs it, it's... You're They're on to the next one. 100%. Especially, in a, as you and I talked about, 100%. in an application world from a consumer standpoint, if you are not driving the ability for your customer to quickly transact on their applications, if for, for, as you said, two seconds. Sometimes I think it's even less than two seconds. Yeah. I look at my children. God, they're you know, impatient beyond belief. They're going to flip over to the next app. And that's the difference between a, a loyal customer and a not loyal customer. Totally. And I, and I think that over time, too, our great customers hold us to a higher and higher standard. Absolutely. So, you know, better, better, never done. There's always some opportunity to improve that circumstance. And one of the things that's been really rewarding to watch with the DocuSign team is we've seen this cultural shift at DocuSign as well, not just from seeing PagerDuty as an alerting solution, but of your development teams taking full ownership for the services that they're responsible for, yeah. not shipping some code for the customer, but then throwing it over the wall and hoping some ops team will manage it for them. And that's driven the quality of the products and services that you deploy. It improves innovation, right? But it also makes life easier for your teams because they're not waking up in the middle of the night, a hundred of them to get on a call. It's the yeah. two of them yeah. that you know, are responsible for something. So that ownership is also empowerment. And I think it, it, it's kind of this great sort of two-way two two -way, two -way street. So exactly being right. a leader has been so fun over the last couple of years. We've talked many times Learn, about- I consider it a learning opportunity. It is, I feel like I've been learning deeply so much educated more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the last couple of years. And I know that we have a lot of people who are watching today with us and a lot of people in our teams who have experienced the challenges of like the adrenaline rush of dealing with a new challenge, whether it's the pandemic or it's lockdown or remote work, et cetera, but then also having to shift gears and come up with new ways to work new ways to collaborate on you know, product development, new ways to meet the needs of your customers. In this world, how do you find the energy to keep leading through the next thing? How do you help your teams stay engaged and productive in this environment? And most of all, like, how are you helping your customers anticipate changes that are coming their way? Yeah, I think the, for me, the biggest source of that energy, and I mentioned before a, a difficult challenge for me in the pandemic is on a day-to-day -day basis, a huge part of the source of my energy was the interactions, not just with my colleagues, although that's probably the biggest, but with my customers, with yeah. my partners, being able to be in offices, to be at events with folks. When we were talking about this wonderful event and the opportunity to be with everyone and then the, ah, oh, we don't get to do it. 30% COVID the rates increasing. Uh, yeah, it's, it's crazy. I think you made the absolute responsible and correct decision, and yet I know for you, as it is for me. Oh, it's so yeah. frustrating, right? <laughs> but so we've had, a, we've had a series over the last couple of years. The stops and the starts have been very yeah. difficult. I do think in the end, the way I get the energy, and I think the way most successful leaders have to try to find the energy, is you go back to what's important to you. You think about those core values. For us, it's customer success. And then for me, making DocuSign the place that our employees can do what we call the work of their lives. And it has been so much harder to do that because I'm seeing so many customers struggling <clears throat> during COVID and so many DocuSign are struggling to say, this just isn't the way I want to work. I love DocuSign, but <clears throat> I, wish it, I wish the world were in a different place. You know, we had, uh, to give you a crazy stat, our attrition in, uh, so up until a year ago uh, as COVID started was 7%. I mean, it was just no one was leaving DocuSign. Of course, the world was not a great place, and DocuSign was in, doing pretty well. <clears throat> but the answer is people love DocuSign. And now, with the great resignation, for the first time, we're seeing DocuSigners say, 
you know what, I, maybe I just want to do something different because I've gotten tired. I just, need, tired. To I just I need, need to change. I need to change my Zoom frame. And every time I have that conversation with someone, I look and I go, oh, we love you. How can you want to leave DocuSign? It's such a great place and you're, you're a great part of it. And the answer is, as you said, I, I just need to change. So that is incredibly sapping for me, but also for each of those managers. And I watch those managers and I see them say, how could one of my you know, great team members leave? And I think our answer is we just have to double down. And we have to say what's important, focus on the values, focus on why the place is great, what attracted people in the first place, and do that. The same thing with customers, right? Now, we don't have customers leaving us very often, but we have customers that say, hey, I was growing like crazy with DocuSign. Now I can only grow at this rate because there's recession looming, and how do we do that? Same phenomenon. We have to really have open up our hearts and say, we're here to support you and trust that in the long run, if we sort of stick to those core values, the, the business will, will do well. But that patience and that commitment to the core values, I think is what gets us through uh, to the other side. I also think connection, human connection is so <coughs> important. And I think our managers that have been the most successful and the customers who I talk to that have seen sustained success, not just a pandemic benefit, but sustained uh, success throughout you know, the last few years, one of the differences, they've found ways to connect with their customers. They found effective ways to connect yeah. with the humans in their businesses, et cetera. And those relationships continue to grow and repair if they have not been intact during the whole time because of distance or distribution. And so I do think connection is so important. And I also think empowerment is so important. Mm -hmm. Like being able to empower someone with a responsibility as opposed to a set of tasks. Yeah. Like getting out of the tactics and making sure that our people, our customers, our, you know, the people who work for us, our managers, that they really understand the mission, yeah. right? And so I talked about our purpose, our mission, and our vision. This year, we, we actually refreshed those, and we articulated our purpose for the first time. And it was kind of a funny thing, because mm. employees always tell me, like, oh, I came to PagerDuty because of the purpose and the culture. Mm. And I was like, well, what's our purpose? And they all knew, but we had never said it out loud anywhere. So today, you know, you saw, we popped up a slide that yep. shared our purpose and our vision and our mission. And I think it's so important to give people something to hang on to that's bigger than the product, that's yep. bigger than the customer problem that we're solving, that they can work on together, right? Yeah. But also this, these set of experiments that we're running, finding ways for people to be together. Like today's the first time I've seen you in how long in yep. person? Well, we've seen I mean, each other on Zoom. It's been uh, we were skiing the last yeah. time. Yeah, right before your IPO. That's right. I mean, that was the last. So time three years ago, yeah, more three than years three ago. years ago was yeah. the last time we saw each other in person. Yeah. And yet, I think we've done a good job of staying connected and having quick kind of one-to-one chats about yeah. meaningful, important things. Yeah. And so I wanted to wrap on something that I think is meaningful and important to both of us. I. Uh, I, I love working with customers where I feel like our values are really well aligned. And I've always admired DocuSign's approach to social impact. It's something that's very important to us. You know, building uh, an equitable world is a part of our vision. Yep. And trying to live that day to day, uh, both by creating a culture of belonging at PagerDuty, delivering a product, you know, that is, um, that is accessible to everyone, you know, standing firmly about being anti-racist and really looking to make sure that everybody has an equal opportunity to kill it in their career at Pager has been something that's really important to me. I see you've chosen wardrobe well for today because <laughs> we are just kicking off. It's Pride off. Month in San Pride Francisco. Month. Well, everywhere. Well, it's Pride right? Month yeah, yeah, everywhere, everywhere right? yeah, good point. I mean, yeah, we yeah. were talking about this yesterday. It's Pride Month around the world. And even seeing how Pride has evolved, how celebrating Pride has evolved, because I remember when we first changed our logo to a rainbow logo mm -hmm. in our product. Way back, this was six, seven years ago, we got lots of angry notes from customers. And we sure. also got some joyful notes from customers. And we just kept pushing through and doing it because it's the right thing to do. And uh, now everybody's doing it. I'd like, right. to, I'd like to think that we were there at the beginning. Yeah. Uh, but tell me what DocuSign's doing to celebrate pride and what you're doing from a social impact perspective to, to help create a more equitable world where we can all be successful. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll answer your question about DocuSign, but very quickly, one of the things I just want to point out uh, for this audience about you is that you have been an incredible leader. And one of the things I really respect about you, Jen, is the, the variety of different ways you're out 
supporting the community. So whether that's your commitment to pledge 1%, yes. and we all thank you so thank much you. for your commitment to pledge 1% and the leadership, the fact that you serve on other boards because you have so much wisdom and insight to help other companies with, I thank you from thank the UiPath where we all serve together, and we thank you again Automation. because your, your construct of, of really just having so much energy, not just for pager duty and for this community, but for the broader world is huge. But to answer your question specifically, DocuSign, so DocuSign Impact is the kind of organization we have. Uh, that's where all of our philanthropy occurs. That's where sort of our nonprofit work occurs. And we have we give our product free to a lot of nonprofits so that they can you know, leverage that technology for sure. But uh, Pride Month is a special time for us. Uh, and we kicked it off uh, actually yesterday with a great interview I did for the, with the whole company with Chris Mosier, who I've told you about, fantastic trans uh, athlete uh, who I think is just changing people's minds and how they think about Incredible uh, triathlete, right? A triathlete, yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly right. And he is, uh, so and Chris is a fantastic way to kick it off. But we have a series of Pride events across the, uh, really the globe. I think our biggest two will be the Seattle and the Dublin Pride marches. Um, and they're just fantastic ways that DocuSign has really come together. So I, I would say for us, the leadership we try to provide, you know, in, in closing that out, is say we have certain values, we want to demonstrate them the same way you talked about with your logo, and hopefully we create a positive uh, example, not just in the company, but outside of the company so our customers and our partners see that. And if everyone does just a little bit, lifts it up just a little bit, and maybe you know, puts out the wardrobe a little bit, uh, we'll get to a better place. Every, every, every step, every action matters. And like I said, we so much admire what you're doing as a leader, what DocuSign is doing to create a more equitable world. And um, you know, Dan, I have never seen you not be positive, not mm -hmm. give other people around you hope. And it's mm -hmm. been so delightful to have you here today. I know everybody who's watching and will watch On Demand later is gonna learn a lot just from your example of leadership. Thank you. And I, we just, I really want to thank you and DocuSign as well for placing your trust in PagerDuty. It's a partnership that goes back years that I hope will continue for decades. And we sure just really appreciate you being here today. So thank you so much. Thank you very much for having me. My pleasure.